two years into working at the firm, um, my uh, co-founder at the time, um, we started Sin City Cupcakes. Mm. And it was totally by chance. Um, Danielle had told me she was making these alcohol-infused cupcakes, and I'm like, that's an amazing idea. <laughs> and we need to do it in Vegas. So I made all the mistakes in the beginning that a founder makes, right? I literally was like, move into my house. I just bought a house in Summerlin. I'm like, move into my house. We will start the company here. We started baking in my home kitchen in <laughs> Summerlin. <laughs> Such a disaster. I didn't even know how to bake mm. when we started the company, but I just knew that it was a good idea. And I was like, how much fun is this going to be? And so I stayed working full time at my job because businesses take money. So literally all my free cash, I was just funneling it right into the business to get it started. And then um, Danielle was taking care of day-to-day -day operations during the workday. And then nights and weekends, I was helping her bake. I was running deliveries. I was setting up events. I was literally working seven days a week between my full-time day job and running the business. But I had so much fun. Mm, that's cool. Yes. That, and that's still around today, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you guys sell it or did you, did you still own it? Yeah. So we're in the middle of an M&A right now. Oh, no so, way. Yeah. It's exciting. Congrats. That's awesome. Yeah. But like cupcakes were... Like, did you know, I mean, was it just an intuition? You're like, I think this is going to be the next big thing or cause that like, how long ago was that? That would have been what? 10 years ago ish. This was 11 years ago. Okay, cupcakes mm -hmm. have really blown up. I feel like over the last few years, but did you get that early or did you see what other people were doing and you just so, like, Hey, this is what they're doing. Yeah. So this is after like Magnolia bakery took off like on sex in the city. I mean, this okay. is like, we're talking back in the day. Yeah. And so this was right when food trucks started to become popular in mm. Vegas. It's like two, 2012. Yeah. And so we were like, we should have like a cupcake truck. Mm. And so we bought a sprinter van <laughs> <laughs> and like decked it out and turned it into a cupcake truck. And so we would use that for execution on like big catering events or the food festivals. And let's face it, it was mostly just us like drinking wine and like mm -hmm. trying to get people to buy cupcakes. Yeah. Like it was so much fun and crazy. That's cool. So what lessons did you learn that you could teach people today that are listening to this about like they have an idea and maybe it's a crazy idea of like, I'm going to do alcohol infused cupcakes. Like what can you tell them that you wish you would have been told when you got started? Don't be scared to just try it, right? Because I think, you know, everyone has a different level of risk tolerance. But for me, I felt like I did it um, in a very comfortable way in the sense that I didn't just quit my job cold turkey. And I think you have a lot of people who are like, you have to go all in, otherwise you're not serious in this yeah. and that. Well, guess what? I wasn't serious about it. It was a side hustle, mm, right? Yeah. I wasn't serious. I had a good day job with benefits. So I was like, well, you know, clearly I'm not just going to like cut that off cold turkey because I have an operational partner. Yeah. So that's like a huge key piece. And that was something I learned early from that endeavor. And I've replicated that ever since I've always had an operational partner in yeah. everything that I do. Uh, can you explain operational partner? I mean, I, I, like it sounds obvious as a partner who operates, but what does that look like on a day to day and how do you find that person? Yeah. So this person is someone who is um, an equity partner in the company, meaning that they have a piece of the company as well. And, um, Part of how they're earning that equity is through what's called sweat equity, where they are putting in their time, um, perhaps to run it day to day or to be the main point person for the company um, in exchange for part ownership in the company. And then you are bringing, maybe you're bringing the finances, maybe you're bringing the legal know-how, maybe you're bringing mm. connections to a location, whatever it is that you're bringing, um, there's something of value being exchanged there as well. Yeah. So this applies to real estate uh, definitely as well. And I know you, you do some real estate. We'll talk about that. But when I got started in real estate, I remember my first like partnership ever, I had a, a, a basically a, a triplex. It was like three little houses on one lot mm -hmm. and I wanted to buy it. It was one of my first, one of my first multifamilies and I wanted to buy it, but it had no money. And so I became the operating partner. Mm -hmm. uh, I operated the deal. I found it. I put it together. I managed everything. And I found a, a buddy of mine who I went to church with and him and his wife, they had some cash. They actually had a line of credit on their house, like a home equity line Perfect. of credit. So yeah. they funded it. Uh, it was like 30 grand maybe. And then we split everything at the end of the day, 50, 50. Amazing. And it worked out perfect. That's so great. But then here's what's funny. I love whenever I tell this story to people, I get one of two answers. Well, why would you give them 50% if you're doing all the work? And then other people say, well, why would they give you 50% mm -hmm. if they put all the money? And I'm like, that's funny. Like, <laughs> that's a, what a partnership That's what a partnership is. does. Yeah. 